<laughs> when we were talking about topics to do, I, was, I floated the proposal, being versatile to be consistent. And th to me, that says everything right there in, in, in one little topic. If you want to be consistent, you need to be able to be versatile. And there's kind of a science behind it, in my opinion. And at first, at first my, I floated this topic across and it got shot down. <laughs> He's like, no, that's, we don't want to do that. And then so the more they thought about it, the more they said, you know what, that, let's, let's do that. Let's do it. So I was glad they did because, um, you know, there's a difference in these two pictures, and I wanted to show the example. Anybody know who this, this cat is with the large beard? Anybody know who that guy is? It's not, he's not, he doesn't play in a rock band or anything. His name is, his name, yeah, he's not in ZZ Top. His name is Raji Brown, and he, uh, he's uh, Michael Neal's uncle. He's a guide on Chickamauga, and this is uh, Tim Carini. He works for Bass Fan. They caught a 49-pound stringer. We all want to catch a 49-pound stringer, right? Yeah, that's unbelievable. Uh, but this over here is how you make a living. You're catching three pounders, uh, and, and you do you do this by being by being versatile. You, you, you know, you do this when all the stars line up. That's a whole lot harder to do. That's why they're the only people that I've ever known to do that. Uh, so that's why I wanted to kind of show that. Like this is this is this makes for fun. This makes for tournaments. This makes for pro anglers' careers. Uh, but yeah, this over here, you know, catching these three pounders is 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 more aligned with being consistent and having fun out there every day on the water. Whether you're in a tournament, you're just fun fishing, or you're in a club, or what, whatever it is. Oh, went too far. And one of the reasons I, I like to talk about being consistent is because bass live everywhere. Um, yeah, I just, I just grabbed these three pictures to kind of show you an example of the different types of fisheries and I, I really started thinking about it. Man, I've, I've fished all over the country. I've fished in Canada, I've fished in Mexico, I've fished in Spain. And I can tell you, this looks the most like the places I've fished in Spain. Uh, they're, they're deeper, bigger impoundments. But, you know, we have these kind of impoundments not too far from here and we have them kind of scattered all over the country. There's ways that you catch fish here. There's different ways you catch fish here. And there's different ways you catch fish here. But the funny thing is, a bass is a bass. A bass is a bass is a bass. Uh, they like the same kind of comforts, let's say, to, uh, to live around. But the, the cover, the watercolor, uh, the, in, the, in the different environments that they live in, the seasonal, it all, it all changes how you have to fish for them. So you need to be able to be versatile to be able to do that. So what, Okay, versatile. So what the hell does being versatile mean? I kind of touched on it just a minute ago. Um, you know, changing bodies of water. I mean, within, let's say, three hours of here, there's all kind of different types of fisheries. you got some tidal fisheries. you got some shallow natural fisheries. I know especially down towards South Jersey, uh, places with a lot of grass that look like that one bottom picture. And then you've also got you know, deeper impoundments, you know, more in Pennsylvania. So you, within three hours or so, you've got a lot of different types of bodies of water, so you're going to need to be versatile. And uh, yeah, how many how many have gone out there and fished for three or four days, and the weather be exactly the same every day? That just it, it never happens. So you have to be able to adapt also to the weather. Occasionally the stars might line up, but rarely does that happen. I'll tell you one one perfect example of that. Uh, a number of years ago, I was fishing uh, a, a FLW at Beaver Lake, and in practice. We had a front coming through, we had a three-day practice, we had a front coming through, we had overcast skies and wind, and if you're not familiar with Beaver Lake, it's a deeper, clear water impoundment. And during, the, and during that practice time, I mean, with all that wind and that overcast, they were biting the fire out of a crankbait. I was catching them on a, on a wiggle wart, I was catching them on a lure Jensen crankbait that I was uh, throwing at the time. I didn't even, it was so long ago, I didn't even have a uh, little John. Uh, it was throwing it through two or three different crankbaits, and I was catching 12 to 15 keepers a day on a pattern, and I, I had them kind of dialed in. And on that lake, that's pretty good. They're 15 inch keepers. So I, in the practice, uh, after practice, I went and met with my co-angler, and he said, he said, man, tell me what you're, do what you're doing. And I said, well, in practice, I've been catching them on a, on a crankbait, but I think it's gonna be a little bit different. 
Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their touted special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.